Well, good morning. What a fantastic morning to be able to worship together the Lord. Uh, what, a, what a highlight of our week, the beginning of our week that we get to be together. And uh, this is a point in our service where those who are believers in Jesus Christ get to take a few minutes to follow Jesus' instructions it's when we as an assembled body of believers uh, take a piece of bread and a cup as symbols that remind us of Jesus' death, uh, where he gave his life on the cross as the once and for all payment for the sins of everyone who would believe in him. And so this morning, uh, as we prepare as a body to take the Lord's Supper together, please turn in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 5. If you don't have a Bible, there will be some men coming forward. Uh, if you put your hand in the air, they will hand you a Bible so that you can follow along with us this morning. And, and as you're finding your way to 1 Peter chapter 5, think back to yesterday morning. It was Saturday. Maybe it was your day off. Maybe it was your day to sleep in. Um, and when you walked outside your door, did you give any thought on this perhaps day of rest that there was actually someone who that day sought your harm? Did you wake up with a sense of urgency? Did you leave your home on the alert? Well, let's look this morning to 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Peter says, Be of sober spirit, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. But resist him, firm in the faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished among your brethren who are in the world. Peter has been writing to suffering, persecuted Christians who have been the object of slander, mistreatment, ridicule, intimidation, and hostility. Perhaps even their own lives were in danger at this time. And in the prior verses, Peter has just underscored the importance of believers exercising humility towards one another. The world will hate believers, but we must not turn on one another but instead exercise humility towards one another in verse 5 and humility before the Lord in verses 6 and 7. So then in verse 8, Peter writes about our chief enemy in this world, Satan, the devil, the one whose influence is behind the affliction Peter's readers experienced. He's the one who acts to blind the minds of the world and he seeks to do us harm. And Peter gives us two instructions in verses 8 and 9 to help us prepare for this daily assault. First, he says in verse 8, don't let your guard down. Be of sober spirit. Be sober-minded, unlike the one who is drunk and who has lost the capacity to reason well, who has lost a grip on reality. The sober-minded person is in control of their own thoughts. Peter also says, we need to be watchful in verse 8. In Acts 20, Paul uses this word about the necessity of elders and shepherds to be awake and watchful because there are savage wolves seeking to devour the flock. And that's the language here that's used of Satan who stands ready to devour. And so believers are to conduct themselves in the ever-present state of sobriety and a watchfulness and alert. And why? Peter says, the end of verse 8, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. Satan accuses believers. He slanders believers. He seeks to devour believers. And while other places in Scripture speak to Satan's craftiness or his deception, what Peter emphasizes here is the bold, angry roaring of the, of the enemy who is walking around, baring his teeth and roaring for all to hear. Satan seeks to cause fear with his roar. Fear that he might then use as an opportunity to devour. 
And that word devour speaks of a complete destruction, a swallowing up. Satan doesn't just want to harm us, but to destroy us, to destroy our faith. And so believer, do you go about your day with an alertness and a sobriety that there is someone who seeks to destroy you and your faith? Well, the natural response to such a thought that Peter writes in warning them about our ever-present enemy might be fear itself. I mean, I'm, I'm afraid of that, but that's not Peter's intent. Um, it is actually Satan who seeks to cause us fear. But we aren't to fear Satan, but to be alert and watchful and aware of his plans. So that his attacks, his prowling around, his roar wouldn't actually drive us to fear. That we wouldn't respond in anger and pride and despair when those in the world or those in the church sin against us and seek our harm. No, Peter called us first to not let our guard down in verse 8, and then in verse 9 he tells us now, stand your ground. Look at verse 9. Resist him. You know, there are a lot of things that we are told to flee in this world. Uh, we are to flee idolatry, flee youthful lusts, but we aren't told to flee Satan. What are we told to do? Resist him. Stand against him. Plant our feet. Don't be moved by his attempts to cause us fear. Well, look at the next phrase. How are we to possibly stand against him? We aren't to speak to him. We aren't to try to seek to bind him or, or any other things that people might do. But what are we to do? What does this resisting look like? The next phrase, Peter says, we are to resist him by being firm in the faith. To resist Satan, we must cling to what we have believed. We cling to the truth. And that's what we do this morning. Uh, we may have an enemy that seeks to do us harm, to cause us fear, to cause us to doubt what God has said, to cause us, if possible, to even abandon the faith. But we have something that we celebrate this morning that cannot be taken away. If we are in Christ, Peter tells us in chapter 1 that we have an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled and unfading. And, and it's kept in heaven for us who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. That salvation that we sang about on that day. So we resist our enemy and we, we cling to what we know to be true. What we know to be true about God, what we know to be true about what he has done for us, what we know to be true about what he has promised us. So this morning, we do that as a body. We, we cling to what we know to be true. We remind ourselves of the gospel and we take the bread and the cup. We remind ourselves that Christ, who did not sin, who did not fear the roaring of Satan, who did not revile others when sinned against, but willingly took our sin upon himself on the cross. And he bore the punishment that we deserved to secure for us that unshakable inheritance. So in a minute, the men are going to come forward and pass around the trays. And when those trays come, if by your own admission you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, we just ask that you let the trays pass by you when they come without taking the cups. But if... If you're a follower of Jesus Christ this morning, please take the bread and the cup and then hold on to them. And while you wait, I just ask that you would evaluate your heart before the Lord this morning. Has the pressure of life and sin around you, maybe even sin against you, caused you to be anxious or fearful? Maybe angry. Have, have these same pressures squeezed out your time in God's word and in prayer? If we are to cling to the truth, we need to be in the truth. We need to be in God's word. And so just in your seat this morning, confess to the Lord where you've been fearful or prideful or angry or sluggish, self-dependent, and remember Christ's example, his example of humility his example of trust in the Father, and ultimately at this time, we also remember his sacrifice for us on our behalf.